Now, before we start with the hypothesis testing, there's a small correction in this slide. And uh, remember that uh, we were estimating the model where this was the intercept term and this was the slope term. So the variance of the slope term here would be sigma capital Xi square upon n upon uh, sigma small Xi square, but Xi is your deviation from mean of X. Okay, so this term here is sigma b naught square and this is your sigma square b1 okay so the, the notation was taken from gujarati and gujarati basically takes b1 as the intercept term but in this lecture i have taken b naught as the intercept term okay so this is the small uh, i would say um, difference between what the, the the way we define the intercept term and the way gujarati defines the intercept term in our in, in this entire lecture we are following a notation which says that your b naught is the intercept term okay so um, now we can move on to uh, hypothesis testing uh, here here this so so uh, now what is the what is the idea of hypothesis testing in this case so uh, now we'll have to first uh, define the regression equation the regression equation looks something like this b naught plus b1 xi okay and uh, what we estimated is a sample regression function which looks something like this okay so b small b naught is a estimator of beta naught and small this b1 is an estimator of beta 1 okay so the null hypothesis that we are defining says that your beta 1 is equal to 0 that is there is no relationship between x and y okay so the moment we say uh, if, if we are unable to reject null hypothesis all we're saying is that there is no relation between x and y so basically uh, 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 the linear relationship between x and y is um, as is, is not does not really exist okay and and if we if we reject null then what we are saying is that there is indeed some relationship some statistically significant relationship statistically significant relationship between x y and x and and we, we say this only if we only if we reject null hypothesis okay uh, but we can also set an alternate hypothesis wherein we say beta 1 is greater than 0 that is we say the coefficient here is positive the true population parameter is uh, has a uh, has a positive coefficient or it is a negative coefficient okay and and likewise we have just this just like in in case of um, uh, um, sample means and uh, sample means which we had done in the uh, unit one topic one of this course uh, there are two approaches here the one is a test of significance approach where we create a test statistic and we see if this test statistic um, exceeds a critical value and if it does exceeds a critical value then we reject the null hypothesis the decision rule remember that and likewise uh, we can also form a confidence interval and see if the true uh, population parameter as indicated by the null hypothesis falls within the confidence interval or not if it doesn't fall then we reject the null hypothesis okay so now we, that we have um, understood the idea of hypothesis testing, we'll just try to um, understand the first approach, which is test of significance approach. And let's just start with um, this estimated regression equation, uh, which is given in your textbook as well. So it says that y hat is equal to 432.432. .432 plus 0 0.0013 xi remember the term y hat here means predicted y okay now in the brackets 
then the standard error for each of these two parameters are mentioned and for the slope the intercept term it is 16.9061 for the slope term it is uh, 0 0.0000245 so we can now set the null and the null null and the alternate hypothesis and then uh, create a test statistic so uh, we'll be testing the uh, null for the slope term okay so the null is beta 1 equal to 0 remember that Gujarati here calls this beta 2 sorry it calls it uh, yeah it's called it beta 2 but since we have been following a notation which says beta naught is the intercept and beta 1 uh, is the slope term we'll be saying the null hypothesis as beta 1 equal to 0 and the alternate will be beta 1 not equal to 0 which means that it's a two-tailed hypothesis testing test okay two-tailed test of hypothesis testing now now that we've defined the null and the alternate hypothesis uh, we may also uh, uh, we have to now create a test statistic so the t-test recall is basically b2 minus beta 2 star which is this is the hypothesized value of the population parameter upon standard error of beta 2 now hypothesis hy hypothesized value of this population parameter is uh, pardon me this is this should be one here my bad yeah it should be one here so it's it's basically given as zero so we'll take it as it is from a null hypothesis and since, since we're trying to reject or not reject a null hypothesis so b1 upon minus zero upon se of b1 remember that it may not always be zero so in so if in the examination they can make it one two ten whatever they want to all you have to do is just plug this uh, value in null hypothesis in this test and find a test statistic so in this context we can say that the b1 here is your 0 0.0013 minus 0 over the standard error of the slope term which is 0 0.00245 and uh, once we uh, just solve this this will turn out to be 5.43 so this is basically the calculated t value now we have to also find the t critical okay and uh, we can find the critical value at different levels of significance and in the textbook what they have uh, done is that they have given the critical value for 1% level of significance and remember that uh, uh, this will be found for 8 degrees of freedom okay since there were 10 observations and uh, we estimated two parameters so we left with 8 degrees of freedom uh, so critical value here is your uh, 3.35 at 1% level of significance and uh, at 5% level of significance it is 2.306 okay and uh, it's 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 fairly easy to understand that at 1% level of significance the null can be rejected and uh, so can uh, uh, and, and and if it's it's rejected at one percent level then obviously at five percent level of significance also we can reject it so at so so we can the, the final result will be that uh, uh, we reject decision rule that we reject null hypothesis okay that is there is indeed some association between y and x so what it implies is there is some relationship between 
y and x that's it and this this when we say there is some relationship we mean statistical relationship and this relationship is statistically significant okay so now we can move to the next approach so in this uh, presentation what we'll try to understand is we'll we'll try to look at the confidence interval approach of hypothesis testing and we'll try to construct the 95 percent confidence interval uh, to the slope parameter of this equation uh, remember this is a similar equation that we had used in the previous a slide lecture okay so once again we define the null hypothesis which is beta b beta 1 is equal to 0 and here beta 1 is not equal to 0 and uh, since we are building a 95 percent confidence interval uh, remember that the critical value we defined in the previous not defined but, but we found in the t distribution was minus 2.2.306 and here it was 2.2 plus 2.306 uh, so so basically between these two cutoffs 95 percent uh, interval is captured by the uh, uh, by this test statistic in the t distribution okay so we can just just bring this part out of the probability so this will look like 2.306 b1 minus beta 1 beta 1 is a true parameter and uh, this is what it will look like now okay very neat and clean so we can just take the standard error of b1 to the uh, or we can say we can just multiply the entire expression by standard error of b1 when we do that minus of 2.306 times standard error of b1 less than equal to b1 minus beta 1 less than equal to 2.306 times standard error of b1 okay uh, recall that in this regression equation standard error of b1 is basically this number 0 0.000245 okay so but we, we won't plug these numbers for now what we will do is we'll just further simplify it and uh, what we do in the next step is we basically uh, subtract this uh, small b1 on all three inequalities so let's see what happens when we do that so it becomes minus of 2.306 times standard error of b1 okay uh, minus of b1 minus of beta 1 times 2.306 times standard error of b1 minus of b1 now remember it's minus of beta 1 here so what will happen now uh, since we'll be uh, since it's a minus of beta 1 we want to make it plus of beta 1 we multiply we, we multiply all uh, all three inequalities by minus 1 and when that happens the signs will also flip okay so it becomes uh, b1 plus 2.306 times standard error of b1 and this becomes greater than equal to beta 1 greater than equal to b1 minus 2.306 times standard error of b1 or one may write the confidence interval is as beta 1 the confidence in 95 percent confidence interval for beta 1 is small b1 plus minus 2.36 times standard error of b1 and just just re re recall that standard error of b1 just one moment is given as sigma square upon sigma sigma uh, sigma square upon uh sigma xi square where xi is basically deviation from the mean square okay and we can use uh, and in case this is not known to us we, we use its estimator 
So likewise for this regression equation, we can find the 95% confidence interval by plugging the values. So B1 will be taken as 0 0.013 uh, plus minus 2.306 times standard error of B1, which is 0 0.00245. And uh, we will we'll get the 95% confidence interval as 0 0.0074 and 0 0.00187. Now notice, notice our null hypothesis is that B1 this is B1 by the way, not B2. B1 is equal to 0 and in this 95% confidence interval, nowhere 0 uh, is, is featured, okay? As in the 0 doesn't come in this interval for sure. So 0 basically lies outside this interval. So in the sense that uh, the true parameter, the 95% the, the confidence interval for this true parameter does not contain zero, hence we can reject the null hypothesis. And hence there is some positive association between, or not positive, there is some association whether positive or negative, we, we haven't really uh, thought about that uh, because we did not set our alternate hypothesis uh, testing for a positive or a negative relation. So, so, so we can say that uh, th there is some association between x and y okay so i uh, hope you enjoyed this lecture so this this was the confidence interval approach and we did before that we did the, did the test of significance approach and we got the same result by both approaches thank you